Good day everyone. Uh, this is Alexander M. Kabangbang from Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in Social Studies, and this is my pre-recorded presentation in Ed 204. It's all about child find through a peripheral process. So, the objectives. At the end of this lesson, we will be able to identify the reason why there is a child find and know the phases of pre-referral process in child find. And lastly, it will demonstrate understanding about child find. So, child find through a peripheral process. The purpose of pre-referral process ensures modifications and accommodations for students who have difficulties in learning based on their disabilities and needs and to create ways to help the student in their education. The peripheral process helps educators use this problem solving team to find an effective teaching strategies that would work for struggling students. Before placing the child in an RTI process, groups of academic and professional educators would work together to determine the difficulties of the students and come up with working strategies to develop child in their learning success before placing the child in a special education program. So, purpose of child find. There are five phases as it follows. So the free referral process of this. Number one, students is put through a universal screening where struggling students are identified. So what is universal screening? So universal screening is the administration of an assessment to all students in the classroom. The purpose of this assessment is to determine which students may be struggling with the reading skills. Schools have several options related on how they conduct universal screening. So, what are the examples of universal screening? So, although by no means an exhaustive list, the most common universal yeah, the most common universal screening is the curriculum based measurement or the CBM. And what is the purpose of universal screening? So, universal screening is a critical first step in identifying students who are at risk for experiencing reading difficulties and who might need more time in instruction or different instruction although together. Screening is conducted to identify or predict students who may be at risk for poor learning outcome. So, how often should a universal screening be conducted? So, the universal screening is administered between one and three times per year, depending on the district policy and the availability of resources. Whether given once a year or more often, its purpose changes slightly depending on the time at which it is administered as is outlined in the table below. Number two. So the students is the move to the second tier of the RTI process where they are given an effective database instruction. The student progress is monitored regularly. So what what is art what is the RTI process? So RTI means response to intervention. So it aims to identify struggling students early and on a given them support they need to drive in school. A big part of the RTI process involves clearly monitoring students' progress. So that, that way, the, the, the school can see which students need more academic support. So if you look inside any general education classroom, chances are good that you'd see different students struggling for the different reasons. 
it can be hard for a teacher to tell right away which students are struggling or why. Response to Intervention or RTI aims to identify struggling students as what I've said earlier. So, the world intervention is key to understanding what RTI is all about. So, the goal is for the school to intervene or step in and start helping before a student falls really far behind. So, teachers can provide targeted teaching called interventions to help struggling students catch up. A big part of the RTI process involves closely monitoring students' progress. That way, the school can see which students need more academic support. And RTI isn't a specific program or type of teaching. It's a proactive approach. RTI measures students' skills and uses this data to decide which intervention to use. So, How do teachers track their students according to RTI? So another, spe- another essential component of RTI is called progress monitoring. Th- that means that teachers frequently assess students' skills to decide whether an intervention is working. So during an intervention, a teacher or other member of the RTI team uses an assessment tool that measures certain skills. They assess the skills every week or every other week. That may sound like a lot of testing, but each assessment only takes a few minutes to complete. So, what are the benefits of RTI? So, RTI is effective for lots of reasons. For one, it can help more kids thrive in general education classrooms. It can also help schools save special education resources for kids who truly need them. Many students performing below grade level don't have disabilities. Through the RTI process, they can make progress with spe- without special education services. So let's go to number three. So number three, if the student needs additional support and still struggles after receiving instruction specified during the tier one, the student is moved to tier two where they will have extra additional support from teachers and professional educators. So, all children need love, encouragement, accommodation, and support. And for kids with learning disabilities, such positive reinforcement can help ensure that they emerge with a strong sense of self-worth, confidence, and the determination to keep going even when things are tough. In searching ways to help children with learning disabilities, remember that you are looking for ways to help them them help themselves. Your job as a parent is not to cure the learning disability, but to give your child to give your child the social and emotional tools they need to work through challenges. In the long run, Facing and overcoming a challenge such as a learning disability can help your child grow stronger and more and more resilient. Always remember that the way you ha- that the way you behave and respond to challenges has a big impact on your child. A good attitude will solve the problems associated with learning disability, but it can give your child hope and confidence that things can improve. And, the, and, that the, and, that, and that they will eventually succeed in the future. So, every teacher has that student. The student who spends the whole period with their head down. The student who never turns anything in. The students who tries to talk or text the whole time. You can be an expert in the classroom management but still struggle with engaging all of your students. When I worry about engaging engaging students, I worry about and then myself try to tell something that hey you you can reach every student. But I always reply, I know, but I have to try. So I'm often reminded 
of the modern day parable of the little boy who walks down the beach and throwing starfish back into the ocean. I just watched this. I, I just watched that movie. So, uh, without this help, the starfish would die. So, another man stops and asks the young boy why he is wasting time. So, there is so many starfish in the world that this boy actions wouldn't amount to doing anything. So, he couldn't possibly make a difference. So, the sage boy promptly picks up another starfish, throws it into the ocean, and they merely replies, it made a difference to that one. So, in this phase, so if if a teacher give a if a teacher give an assessment to the student and he didn't pass then actually it will move to another phase so let's go on to number five so the fifth phase of pre-referral is after if the student's progress is not improving the students will then receive more intensive instruction in general education classroom or in a special education classroom so general education means general education includes uh, educational programs that are designed to prepare students for entry into vocational vocational education but do not prepare for employment in a particular occupation or trade or class of occupation or trades nor lead directly to a labor market relevant qualification so on the other end Special education means the practice of educating students in a way that provides accommodations that addresses their individual differences, disabilities, and special needs. So, schools are developing a team approach to work through problems to prevent referrals. So, teachers often want to nurture a child's uh, capability and ability for them to be a normal student at the school so team members so work together to identify a child's learning strengths and needs put strategies into action and evaluate the impact of the interventions so the child can succeed in the general education classroom so pre-referral strategies as a team meeting a child's strengths interests and talents are described so reasons for referral are listed including behavior and academic achievement so interventions previously tried are discussed and if any success has been achieved interventions may include accommodations modifications and behavior plans to try at home and in classrooms so interventions are shared to address immediate concerns interventions are carried out and strategies are evaluated to see what works so before anything else before i i end up my pre uh my i end up my demonstration so i want you to uh i want you to listen and watch a video presentation about child find through a peripheral process so here it As the parent or guardian of a preschool age child who is suspected of having an educational disability, know that Frederick County Public Schools offers a continuum of special education services for children starting at age three. Child find is the process for locating and identifying all children from birth through age 21 who are suspected of having an educational disability. Prior to the age of three, the Frederick County Infants and Toddlers Program provides support for identified children and their families. Concerns regarding school-age students are addressed through the special education team at the school or through our central office team. Today we are going to look specifically at the special education process as it applies to preschoolers and their families. 
Preschoolers who are not yet enrolled in a public school are determined to be eligible for special education and related services through the child find process. Families who have concerns about their child's development should call the child find office to make a referral for an individual educational program or IEP screening meeting. Other children may be referred by their medical provider or Head Start. Children may also be referred by Frederick County Infants and Toddlers Program. All families who would like for their child to be considered for special education and related services must have a child find IEP meeting. For all children identified as having an educational disability and whose families would like to receive special education services through Frederick County Public Schools, an IEP will be developed. Based upon the goals and objectives developed for a child, appropriate services will be recommended. Preschoolers with disabilities receive a variety of special education services through Frederick County Public Schools. Sometimes a preschooler requires consultative services between FCPS service providers and teachers and caregivers in community programs. Some children receive direct support in their community preschool or Head Start classroom. Many preschoolers receive itinerant or walk-in services at the school where they would eventually attend kindergarten. Special education, speech language therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and hearing and vision services are available at all elementary schools. The appropriate type, amount, and location of service is determined based upon the approved IEP that has been developed. Some preschoolers' needs are more significant than others, and they may require the support of a special education pre-K program. This is a comprehensive program that meets up to five half days weekly. While not housed in every elementary school, all children in Frederick County are provided services as needed. Transportation is provided. If students require related services, in addition to direct special education, these services will be provided during the child's school day. Opportunities for inclusive experiences are a priority for children attending these programs, which educate children identified with disabilities and typically developing peers. There are additional specialized programs for children who are more significantly impacted by their disabilities. The Challenges Program provides support for children who require considerable support in a highly structured, communication-focused program. Rock Creek School provides support for children with very significant educational and or medical needs. Special education services through Frederick County Public Schools are typically provided following the regular school calendar from September to June. Children with critical life skill needs on their IEP may qualify for extended school year services for several weeks during the summer. The need for these summer services will be determined by the child's IEP team. Transition into school is an exciting time for children and their families. As questions arise, please contact your child's current service coordinator or the Child Find office. The Child Find team is looking forward to working with you and your child as they continue to grow and develop. So, before I end this up, so meet my friend, Butit. So, Butit is a special education student in Chateau National High School way back 2016-17. And he, his words mark on my mind is that his ability is stronger than his disability. And that's all. Thank you for watching and stay safe. God bless and I love you all.